Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm or style based on the concept of objects. It pretty much organizes the software design around the data rather than the logic or functions. In the object-oriented programming world, everything is represented with objects. A car, a person, a bank, an animal, etc. It can be someone or something. And the way to represent and create objects is by using class. The objects can have values, which in a class are called properties, and objects can do things, which in a class are called methods. Think of a class as blueprint to create objects. You know those community houses? Well, an architect has a single blueprint he or she created to represent those houses. And from a single blueprint, all the houses are created containing exactly the same values and do the same things. Every person that uses and lives in those houses customizes them for their liking, adding or removing things depending on what they are trying to accomplish. The blueprint in this case would be a class, and from that class, we create different objects called instances, which we can change as we like. Besides objects and classes, there are few other concepts you need to be familiar with in object-oriented programming. For example, encapsulation. The idea behind encapsulation is that classes can hide information or ways to manipulate information from the outside. We can classify class members in three ways based on the level of encapsulation. Public being something you can access and change after you create your instance. Private being something only methods inside of a class can have access and change and protected being something only meant for a class that extends another class. The way we define this level of access is by using these keywords called access modifiers. You can also access things in a class without having to initialize or extend a class, and these are called static members. They can be values or methods that do not use any class internal members to do things. They contain no reference to the self or the this keyword. Encapsulation allows you to choose what to expose and what to protect, which is one of the great things about object-oriented programming. I mentioned protected members, and that takes me to a different important object-oriented programming concept, which is inheritance. A class can inherit members from another class by extending it. Inheritance is powerful because it lets us start from something simple and change it to gain different abilities, contain different values to fit a different purpose. For example, from our basic house, I can extend it to include a pool, have an extra floors level, attach a garage, and all of a sudden we created a different blueprint that shares common features from the basic initial house blueprint, but with some alterations to fit our need. If a person looks at our new modified house, may not know that we actually based it on another totally different. And because our new house inherits from a basic house, it has things that exist in our initial house. And this ability of calling the same method or accessing the same properties on different objects and simply works, it's called polymorphism, which is another very important object-oriented programming concept. You normally see this in methods like toString and properties like keys values, which can be shared with many different objects. You can also compose many objects into one to create something, and this concept is of composing things into a new one is called aggregation. A good way to picture this is by having classes that represent different parts of a car, and by combining them together, we create another class called car. There are also many other terms you should be familiar with when in the object-oriented world. For example, abstract class which is a special class that can only be extended and not instantiated. Singletons are also not a special type of class. It is a class that no matter how many times you instantiate it, you always get the same instance, which means that any reference you have of it get affected by any changes you do. As anything else, object-oriented programming is not perfect. In fact, it is super criticized for many things as any other programming style. One being that it can be robust, complicated, and a headache to change once the application grows bigger. The idea that data can do things often makes no sense for many, and the argument against is that data should be data, and then you create functions that interact with the data. With object-oriented programming, you fall into the tendency to complicate things that can be taken care of with simple functions. Another popular program paradigm is functional programming, which sits pretty much on the opposite side of the table. 
For me, it is a matter of which you like, which makes sense for your application and team, and which gets you to the solution. I find object-oriented and functional programming both fascinating despite of what community says, and it is always good to understand different styles of programming as a software developer. With that, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.